Thanks for watching. And today I want to cover an integral that I think it's very satisfying. I was so excited about that. I asked that question on my calculus midterm and the students didn't seem to like that. But hopefully you will like it. Let's see. So it's the integral of 1 over 1 minus x squared to the 3 halves. Well, because we're taking a half power, it's a square root. And whenever you see 1 minus x squared, especially square root of 1 minus x squared, it calls for a trig substitution. And in fact, let's do that. So let's use the trig substitution x equals to sine of theta. And let's try to plug everything in. So first of all, dx becomes the derivative of that cosine of theta d theta. And let's see what happens to this square root of 1 minus x squared to the cubed. So square root of 1 minus x squared cubed becomes, well, square root of 1 minus sine squared cubed. And that becomes as 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So square root of cosine squared cubed. And then, well, usually square root of x squared is absolute value of x. But it turns out this cosine is positive. And that's because when we let x equals to sine of theta, this substitution only works for a specific range of theta, namely where uh, sine is 1 to 1, which in this case would be the interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2. So here's where like sine, you know, it doesn't have multiple values. And notice exactly on that interval, cosine of theta is non-negative. So in fact, cosine is positive, if you want. And so square root of cosine squared is really cosine. So what you end up with is cosine cubed of theta. So that's good. We have all our ingredients. And therefore, our integral then just becomes integral 1 over cosine cubed theta. And that's not all. The dx, remember, is cosine of theta d theta. So it's times cosine of theta d theta. How nice! One of the cosines cancels out. So this one with this one. And you're left with 1 over cosine squared theta d theta. But another name for 1 over cosine is secant. So this just becomes integral of secant squared of theta d theta. How nice. And we know what the antiderivative of secant, is, secant squared is. It's just tangent. So the answer is tangent of theta plus a constant. However, that's not really all, the, because since x equals to sine of theta, or theta, you can put the sine on the left-hand side, but remember to put an arc sine here. So theta is arc sine of x, so the answer is tangent of arc sine of x plus a constant. Now. If you like arc sine, this is a perfectly valid answer. But it turns out, because the you know, beginning integral involves square roots and stuff, turns out we can also write the final integral, final answer, in terms of square roots. And for this, we have to use the triangle method in Calc 1a. So again, that's the third part. So the triangle method. All right, so what did we have? Remember we had, you know, a sine of theta equals to x, and we want to find tangent of theta by this part. Okay, 
Since sine of theta equals to x, find the easiest triangle you can think of with the property that sine of theta equals to x. And remember, abracadabra, so katoa, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if you let that x and let that be 1, then sine of theta is x over 1, which is x. So the sine of theta equals to x. And now we want to find tangent of theta, which again, so katoa is opposite over adjacent. That's great. The opposite here is x. And I've, to find the adjacent side, this side, all you have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem to know that you know, uh, this side then just becomes square root of 1 minus x squared. So, one square, um, so we have hypotenuse squared equals to x squared plus this squared. And then solving this, you get that this is square root of 1 minus x squared. So adjacent is square root of 1 minus x squared. Answer is just tangent of theta plus a constant. What tangent of theta is x over square root of 1 minus x squared, which is x over square root of 1 minus x squared plus a constant. How neat is that? No weird trick, you know, uh, trick formulas. It's just it's this very satisfying integral. And my students didn't like it, but there's a cool story though. So I didn't write the final. It's the calculus boss who wrote the final. And it turns out he used the exact same question on the final. And that was not planned at all. So my students were probably very happy about that, or they probably didn't even remember that it's the same question, but still, you know, one point for me. <laughs> All right, so if you like this really nice integral and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.